Hello and welcome to Fantasy News. I've got a little show for you. I hope you don't mind if I spill the tea on the fantasy news industry. Yeah! Don't worry, the fantasy news must flow. And due to unforeseen circumstances, I'm having to record this at night. I apologize, the lighting's different, it's weird, it's throwing me off too, but don't worry, because if you want to see a story covered in fantasy news that I have not covered yet, all you need to do is join the Discord server linked down below and submit the story that came out within a reasonably recent time frame for me to cover, and I might in the future. I get some people that are like, hey, why didn't you cover this story? I put it, I can't cover them all. There's a lot of them that feel like waste of time, if I'm being perfectly honest. I have said before, and I'll say again, if the story is person involved with project says project is good, I will not cover that. That is not news. That's a waste of time. But speaking of people wasting time that I will not tolerate, I saw you dog wizard post in the Discord server on the Fantasy News channel that my book Rebels Creed is available for pre-order and paperback now on Amazon, and that is how dare you put something there like I would self-promote like is available in the links right down there if you'd like to. My own book for you to pre-order. Does that ugh, disgusting? Those links are just right down there though. <laughs> Moving on to the first real news of the day, we have the first trailer drop for Sandman, the adaptation of the critically goddamn filleted, that might be a bit too <laughs> aggressive, <laughs> Sandman story. And I really liked this, but it put a question in my brain that I have to regurgitate out for you. And it, why is it that streaming services have a look for their shows? I get that like studios have like certain cameras they like to use and frame rates and stuff, but there's something beyond that where it's like there's a look to HBO shows and to Netflix shows and to Amazon shows. And it's not just the camera and there's a consistent through line in something else. Maybe it's how they're handling lighting. I don't know, maybe it's even just a similarity of marketing, but there's something about a lot of these where I'm like, if I see just a clip of a trailer for an upcoming Netflix show, I guarantee you there's a well above 50% chance I'll be able to say, yeah, that's that's Netflix. Even if it's not fantasy, like a sex education trailer, I'll be like, that's Netflix, I know that. Versus HBO, I'll be like, that's HBO. Look, it looks moody as hell, that's HBO. Am I crazy or is it just, okay, Daniel, it's the frame rates and the cameras, let it go. Probably that, I'll let it go. Moving on, we also had some character posters for Sam. Man, they look pretty cool. I'm only saying that so I can technically say I covered this story and put one in the thumbnail. I'm a hack fraud and you can judge me in the comments. I want money, Jack. We had a trailer for Witcher season two drop as well as a bunch of behind the scenes stuff for us to enjoy about how it's being created. And it gave me some hope they're gonna be addressing a lot of the criticisms that season one did get. And the internet being the internet, I've seen a lot of people claim I hated or loved Witcher. I wanna reiterate, I thought season one was good. Some elements were really good, some elements were bad. It averaged out to somewhere in the middle, and I think it has the possibility to improving the point where the show is genuinely great. It's just, you know, it takes time to mature and get the right people in the places and the time and budget and confidence to really make the magnificent Witcher adaptation we might eventually get from this series. I don't understand the mentality of the people who see like one season that is fine and they're like, well, it's over. It's a series. They they're, they can improve and get better. There's a lot of shows that have a weak season one and a magnificent magnificent season three. Also, I guess I know Geralt has the happiest sword on the planet. I see it too, and no one can ever make me unsee that. Yay, we get to murder today. <laughs> we also had a, yep, season three of The Witcher is happening as well. And in the second to last piece of Netflix news, because apparently this is Netflix fantasy news, I feel like I should say something harsh about Netflix to, to prove they're not sponsoring me. I find your logo to be kind of overly minimal and pretentious. That's not true. It's it's fantastic. That's a wonderful in. Damn it. Hemlock Grove is extraordinarily embarrassing and you can never fully bury it. Got him! But Stranger Things season four dropped and it looked pretty tonally interesting. I liked this. I remember still to this day watching season one of Stranger Things while recovering from a hangover on a couch in New Orleans with a buddy of mine. And we binged it straight through in a day and just looked at each other like, that was a really, that was a really wonderful way to recover from a night of drinking in New Orleans. And then we did it again and it was much worse the second time. Not the series, the hangover. Although season two of Stranger Things was worse. Oh, it's a metaphor. Or 
not. But I do hope Stranger Things comes to an end soon, and I'm wondering how many people share that sentiment. I'll put a poll out on the channel. We also had a different poll recently here on the channel where I asked you all, which of these sci-fi stories would you like to see adapted in an HBO style adaptation? And Red Rising kind of ran away with it, which I did not predict. I actually wouldn't think it'd be pretty close between Frankenstein and Red Rising, but no. You guys just stole the show, and I don't blame you. I would love to see a Red Rising HBO show. Back on track! And the final Netflix story of the day, we have the fact that Beasts of Prey is being adapted by the studio streaming service thing, whatever that needs to be called. And this just kind of proves that Netflix's fantasy like obsession isn't just a phase that seems to be a core part of their business strategy moving forward. I think it's been a mistake for me to just say, oh, a lot of these places are trying to get the next Game of Thrones. It seems like they're trying to, instead of just have the next Game of Thrones, a market's been proven and they're trying to bring in a whole environment of entertainment that, well, if you don't like this show, you might like that. So instead of having one pillar series that if it crashes could tank, they kind of have this existing flux of material that I think will constantly keep people's attention who are fans of this genre. Money moves. All right, if I have not been ranty and angry enough for you today, don't worry, this next story got me going. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, an indie publisher. And this video is brought to you by Wraithmark's latest Kickstarter for their book, A Mark of Kings, a special edition of an international bestseller. Wraithmark was started by authors to help other authors. Yes, authors like Bryce O'Connor, who wrote Iron Prince. It's a premise that I want to get behind, so I'm happy to have them on the channel here sponsoring us. And if you back their latest Kickstarter, yes, you get a fantastic special edition of A Mark of Kings. And they're about to hit their second stretch goal, which if you manage to get them to, that means you will be getting photo quality color inserts of so many of these gorgeous pieces of art. So if you'd like to support not only this Kickstarter, but the alternative side of publishing where authors are taking control of the means of production, go ahead and check out the link in the description down below. Okay, so it seems that Marvel slash Disney has another lawsuit on their hands. Oh my God, who could have seen it coming? And this seems to be a push from some of the people who are involved crafting various superheroes and the heirs to those people suing to get the rights back of these heroes. And I have seen clickbait headline after clickbait headline have something along the lines of, Disney's gonna lose the Avengers, Spider-Man, oh my God. No, they're not. And everyone writing these articles knows, no, they're not. The worst that could possibly happen for Disney here is they have to pay some settlement out to the heirs of the people who created these heroes. There is no way in this infinite black void of chaos we live in that Disney will have to relinquish its claws from these money-making treadmills they love so much. We are talking about the people who have changed copyright law in America again and again just to keep things like this they've wanted before. What I'm assuming is happening here, and quite fairly in my opinion, are the people who are filing these claims know this. They're just hoping for that payout. And that's not bad. If this gigantic studio is profiting off of a creation of one of your ancestors to this unbelievable, unforeseen seeable extent, you're absolutely in your right to say, hey, give us a bigger share of that. That was grandpa's creation here. But if you see anyone being like, in 2020, blah, 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 Marvel's gonna have to give up Spider-Man. I will put my left nut on eBay if that happens. But let's talk about another media Goliath, shall we? And that's gonna be Nintendo dropped a ton of fun news for people to speculate and talk about. Probably most notably, and certainly one I've seen most in-depth talked about online, we're getting a new Kirby game. Discover a new 3D Kirby adventure set in a mysterious world. Okay, of course it's the Marvel. Mario casting. Who cares that I love Kirby even more than Mario actually and Kirby games were a foundational part of my childhood. I get it. You want me to talk about this weird ass casting and let's talk about it. Some of them I love. Jack Black as Bowser. Beautiful. Anya Taylor-Joy as Peach. Outstanding. Keegan and Charlie Day. I'm on board. Chris Pratt. I... Like that was my reaction when I saw that. I... I I get the people who laughed, it is funny, but like my reaction was like, okay, if you wanna make money, sure, get him because he brings in tickets. You can't argue with that. But like my main focus here is Jack Black as Bowser. That's 
That is like chef's kiss Gordon Ramsay level casting right there. And you cannot modulate his voice. You cannot do anything. I want tenacious D vocals coming out from Bowser. Every time there's like a lava thing, I want to hear him go, yeah, in that Jack Black voice and it'll be awesome. And Charlie Day is Luigi. I don't know how he'll approach that. That's probably the biggest one where I'm like, what's the... What's the vibe going to be there? This is just, this is just odd. This whole thing is just should not exist, probably. I just pass. Like, focus on making Mario Land. That actually, like, fills me with a sense of whimsy and wanting to go see it. I'd love to do, like, a live-action Mario Party day with my friends. That would be wonderful. Holy crap. But a movie? This isn't going to be the MCU. If that clip ages poorly and Nintendo launches off the MCU that turns into one of the biggest things of all time, I will eat a shoe on my channel live. And let's let's just get all the more sad, nasty, shall we? This has been a bummer episode of Fantasy News. Here's some puppies. Look at Look at the puppies. This is what happens when I film at night. This is nighttime, Daniel. I'm dark, Daniel. Puppies. The final Fantastic Beasts movie has officially had its title announced, and it's Fantastic Beasts, The Secrets of Dumbledore. And, um... Why does this feel like the person from your high school who was really, like, the center of attention and no longer is, who constantly posts on Facebook, like, look how interesting my life is. I saw a bird in my backyard. It feels like it knows it's done, but there's still some, just some kicking of that dead horse that needs to be done and just, give me the horse. I really think if Harry Potter stopped, like, you don't understand, like even the, the years where Harry Potter has that movies come out and stuff, like they still sell like crazy. If they just stopped, backed off for five years and came back again at this point, they would have a longevity to their franchise that would be incredible. I think it would be similar to the level of hype we saw from the time gap between the prequels of Star Wars and the new Star Wars trilogy. Despite the controversies around the Star Wars trilogy that just came out, people, you have to remember the hype that was felt for that first Force Awakens trailer. Like that was just a day where it was all anyone would talk about huge. If Harry Potter just disappeared for 10 years and came back in an all new way, I feel like they'd have that, but they can't. They can't take their foot off that gas. And I guess that's kind of like an underlying theme here for this episode of Fantasy News. I'm tired of franchises having their foot on the gas. Can we just, just let me get excited for something again? Let me miss something. So I really did record this in the middle of the night last night. And I think I was just kind of in a grumpy, stressed out mood. My schedule's been rammed recently and it just kind of came through in the video. So I do apologize for the rather negative fantasy news, but I want to insert another positive news story here. And that would be that we got the first image for the upcoming Last of Us show, a franchise I'm very excited for the future for and a show that I'm quite optimistic about. So there you go. By the way, if both my fans are here, What's holding up this camera? Pips, what's wrong? You hear him meowing? He's meowing. I think he must go outside. All right, I'm gonna go do that. But I talked to myself. I told me, Daniel told Daniel, that I'm going to end this episode of Fantasy News on a positive note, and I'm doing it because we are getting a 4K remaster of The Thing, and it is one of my favorite horror movies of all time, and it's one of my favorite just odd bits of trivia movies ever. My obsession with practical effects was essentially born from The Thing. Not the original one, because there was one that came out a long time ago, and not that horrible remake that came out in the 2000s, The Thing. And mm, I think it'll be so much fun to experience again in 4K. These practical effects I know will not look worse just because like you see them more clearly. And I... Ah, I can't wait. I'm, I'm so excited to get my hands on this and watch it and be gross out and scared like I was when I first watched this movie and lost my mind. This one I'm ready for. And for those of you who don't know the movie, I highly encourage you to check it on out. I mean, look at that good old boy right there. Nothing bad could happen to that good boy. Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? You're definitely not gonna murder anybody anytime now. You're a good boy. That's fantasy news though for the day. If you'd like to pre-order my book, Rebels Creed, there's a link. 
there. And you can go ahead and join the uh, Lawful Time series bandwagon. Remember, if you'd like to submit any stories you want to see me weirdly rant about in the middle of the night, all you have to do is join the Discord server and post them in the Fantasy News channel. Do you want this to be the new vibe for Fantasy News late night existential dread, Daniel, when I'm like trying to fight off the, the nighttime saddies? Is that the new vibe you want? I can make that the new fantasy news. Anyway, bye guys. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>